So I'm Amy Suddeth from um, Moodle US. I'm a learning designer. I want to kind of walk you through a project that I've been working on with that's called um, we use the backwards design process to work on a flexible new hire program for a government agency. Um, working with this government agency, we were running into a lot of issues with experiencing high turnover rates. Um, people felt as though they weren't prepared. And so they contracted with Moodle US um, and myself to redesign this uh, new hire track. So what we've learned is that as we're going through this, we wanted to really shape or change how we um, designed the course. We are so used to whenever we're looking at um, looking at education is what is going to be the end result? Like, what do we want them, um, you know, like what do we want our outcome to be? The backwards design model completely flips that around. And so what we do is we focused on defining our goals. We wanted to think about what do we want our learners, these new hires to be able to achieve at the end of three years. Um, then we broke that down into smaller sections of what do we want the learners to do after six months, one year, um, two years, and then eventually that three years. Eventually, then we're going to get into um, determine what that evidence, what that assessments are going to look like along the way. How are we going to know that they're able to achieve those goals? And then we're going to start planning those activities to kind of help build on what eventually those assessments are going to be able to do. Um, next, what we did is start planning those learning activities. And then from those learning activities, we start to think about what the content that we need to um, put into place for our learners, these new hires, to be able to complete those learning activities and those assessments. Eventually, after we're through with all of those steps, what we've done is we've developed an evaluation plan to really see if we've achieved those goals that we had set out in step one. Um, so the process that we worked through and one of the things that we learned very quickly is that this takes a lot of time. So if you are in the process of going through the backwards design model, just be prepared. It's going to take a lot of time. It takes a lot of organization. In order for us to stay organized, we used lucid charts. We used a ton of spreadsheets um, and weekly meetings. We met with the team. We met with a team of directors, um, trainers subject matter experts, everybody that had a part in the overall plan. And we started at the beginning. We developed those goals. And then what we what we realized is that there was some categorization to those goals. Everything was color coded. Um, and then we were able to then take those um, goals and design spreadsheet um, in the design the spreadsheets um, and then break down those sub goals and then eventually put down uh, uh, activities and assessments that are going to be tied to that. After we were able to kind of get the goals all lined out, we decided to meet in person. Um, we had been doing all of this, you know, just in Zoom meetings up until this point. The in-person meetings um, allowed well, the teacher and me to have a completely fun experience, very hands-on. What we did with the in-person meetings is we took a room of this size and put um, poster boards, sticky notes, note cards, and we had the goals and we divided up and we we physically moved goals around and then we aligned what those goals were. We took activities and we said, okay, this activity can be tied to this goal and this goal. We um, used <laughs> stickers to even note like what levels, when these people, when the new hire should achieve that. Um, very, very much a hands-on. You can see that's just one of the pictures um, of what uh, one of the poster boards around the room looked like. Um, so after we have created this room full of 
just color everywhere. What we decided is next when it comes to the assessment and activities piece um, was starting to think about the Moodle tools that we were going to use. And the first thing that I always remind trainers or people that are designing curriculum is that let's think about the activity. What do we want them to achieve first? Prior to what Moodle tool are we going to achieve or use to achieve that goal? So um, what we've decided is that was, this is gonna be a hybrid um, type of learning experience. And so we are going to have asynchronous and synchronous um, training options. Those uh, asynchronous options are going to include the Moodle tools such as lesson. This allows our learner to move through the content repeat the content if they need to, check for understanding along the way. We used H5P activities. Those H5P activities included interactive video. So we were using scenarios, letting the users stop and be asked a question along the way of seeing this play out in front of them. The database activity allowed us to create forms and then allowed our users to share experiences that they were having out in the field. So they are able to have a collection of resources along the way. Quizzes and assignment, those are your typical um, activities that you see inside of Moodle asynchronous courses. Um, we ask, that allows us to also track um, whether or not activities are being, or as, that, um, those goals are being achieved as well. The synchronous training options that we use, we use Zoom interactions. Our trainers are meeting weekly with those new hires as they're moving through the asynchronous courses. So the Zoom sessions are more of used as checkpoints as well as additional training. Go React is an interaction, is an LTI interaction. We provide um, a simulation training for the organization. The simulation training allows the user to have a real life experience in a low stress type of situation so that they're able to practice some of the skills that they're going to need. And then obviously um, they are continuing to do some in-person training as well. So our approach to this is they are a Moodle U or a Moodle US workplace um, client. So they what we're able to do is we're able to leverage the workplace programs. Those programs allow um, you can see that we have a multi-tiered approach. So in the first tier, um, the new hires are put into it. They have a combination of asynchronous and synchronous sessions courses that they need to complete. Once they have completed those, they move to the next level. That's all done through the dynamic rules. So that allows us to have um, completion of programs, that automatic transitioning, reporting allows the trainers, the supervisors, every all of our stakeholders to be able to track the, hire, the progress of those new hires. Um, we've also used the org structure to ensure that those supervisors are able to check in in a timely, man um, timely manner as well. Um, so now I know we have just a short amount of time so we can have um, some Q&A. Um, I will say this is a shameless plug also. There will be a webinar to discuss this full um, process in December. So um, the Moodle Academy will be presenting that. You're talking about dynamic rules. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, this is Moodle Workplace. Why uh, was it not announced that it was Workplace? We do not have access to Workplace. That's private software. So I'm in a conference that I cannot learn anything because you're talking about proprietary software. I should have been warned. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is there any other question? For Amy, yeah. Hi, um, I'm wondering how long did it take to go through all this process? Um, we 
did a very slow and methodical approach and it took us about 18 months um, to go from start, you know, starting the meetings to actually launching the program. Um, about a year ago, it was launched. Thank you.